and welcome to another exciting episode of Clinic Gym Radio. I am your host, Dr. Josh Satterley. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I am very excited. Today is going to be another session with just yours truly. There is no guest, but I do hope you enjoyed our recent guest, Mel Davis, Dr. Mel Davis. She's a PhD and incredible at the science of behavior change and whatnot. Um, yeah, if you haven't listened to that one, go ahead and try and find Mel Davis. She is, yeah, I very much enjoyed that interview. Uh, today, I want to go over something that, again, has come up a lot, and I want to give us a basic idea and ex explanation regarding the clinic gym hybrid model. So it is this, the three phases of the clinic gym hybrid model. That's what I want to cover today. And I'm reducing into three phases, although you can go into a lot of detail with anything. Uh, you can go into a lot of detail, but I want to go to three phases so that you can kind of figure out where you belong on that spectrum and that you can find some uh, easy goals to set up to say, hey, this is where I'm going, what I want to do, et cetera. So <clears throat> let's talk about that. But first, let's talk about something even more awesome. We are looking for more reviews of this podcast. You know, your reviews help push this thing up in the Apple and Spotify and Google's algorithm. And so if you could do us a flave and review this, that would be awesome. Also, every month we will be selecting uh, one person who leaves a review and sending out a wonderful clinic gym hybrid tumbler. It's like a Yeti tumbler. It's like a stainless steel has our logo on it. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's big, 30 ounces. So you can fill it up with just one beverage and say, hey, I'm just having one tonight, uh, which is what I do. But Anyway, all joking aside, I would love to send that to you. So we're just going to randomly select somebody who left a comment. So if you wouldn't mind taking a second, go into the comments, leave us a review uh, on your favorite podcast app, whatever they use, Apple or uh, Google Play or whatever. Just review us and we're going to grab those reviews every month and find a winner. So it could be you. Anyway, so let's dive into the three phases of the Clinic Gym Hybrid. And we've had some previous conversations about who's the perfect person to hire. And then we talked about what's the model. But here are the three phases. Number one, the first phase is the, what I call the exercise phase. This is where you concentrate on making sure that every single one of your patients has exercise as an integral part of their care plan. I cannot imagine any other method. And I will tell you that exercise is uh, the research says it is the best thing to provide people as well. Phase number two. So first is exercise. Phase number two is hiring and using a trainer. So the trainer as CA. This is actually the first article I wrote that started the whole clinic gym hybrid group and whatnot was using that highly trained personal trainer as a CA. So that's phase two, which is the trainer phase. Phase three is the fitness phase. So fitness, uh, or we could say the membership phase. This is where you're trying to take all these people who have gone through your care, experienced exercise, then have transferred to your coach or your trainer, worked with them. And now they're like, hey, I love what you guys offer. I really love the program. I would love to join it as a member. And so this means that you also, as the owner or person running this program, you also have this uh, system and these offerings set up so that somebody can sign up for fitness. Now, so let's, again, the first phase is exercise phase where we're just giving it to every patient. And number two is the trainer phase where we're hiring that person to assist us. And number three is the membership phase. That's kind of the terminal endpoint. We want to build up those memberships and that's where you'll really change the business model and whatnot. So let's talk about these two phases. First off, let's, we're going to go in reverse order. We'll talk about uh, the third phase first, and then we'll work our way backwards. And you can kind of see how it's a, a progression or re regression in this sense. So why is the membership phase the third phase? Well, number one, it, when you develop that membership and you're actively selling people into the membership, it fundamentally changes your business model. It fundamentally changes your business model. Having that recurring revenue, having that membership money coming in every month makes a huge difference. I cannot stress to you how cool it is, right? And it just completely changes your, your business. Now, how do you get there? Well, you got to have 
a membership product to sell, right? Maybe that's two times a week in your uh, of, of classes, like what Chip Bleem did when he started out was just, hey, you're signing up for two times a week kettlebell classes. And then he put together multiple, I think it was like three or four of those two time a week classes, operated very small space, had a bunch of people loved it, and he was getting those memberships. The other thing you need to do is you need to start having a fitness class, which means you got to have hours set aside and you got to figure out your space requirements. So if you have a really tight space, like three, 400 square feet, you're going to realize quickly you can't have fitness at the same time as you're running rehab people through rehab. You just run out of square footage. So what are the hours you want to offer those classes, those membership-based classes? And my tip here would be offer the classes, a few of them, at very busy clinic times because you want people to see those classes in action. You want to see the people in those classes finding success, and you want to see the smiling faces and high fives and all that. And the best time to do that is to demonstrate it to your uh, clinic patients that, hey, this thing goes on here. We'd love to have you be part of it. Part of the reason for that is most patients, when you ask, hey, we have this fitness class, would you be interested? When you ask them that, a lot of them say like, oh, I'm not in that good a shape or I'm too old or I'm injured and all these different excuses come out. And I will tell you the best way to combat all of that is to walk them over to where your class is going on, point out somebody and say, oh, you see, you know, Kathy Johnson there. Yeah. Seven weeks ago, she was in here, could barely walk. She had so much back pain. So she was actually worse off than you are right now. And now here she is in our class doing deadlifts. That is a fantastic conversation. And it puts to bed this, I'm too old, I'm too weak, I'm too injured, I'm too much of something, and allows uh, those people to kind of reassure themselves that they can handle it. So I would want that class running while your clinic is busy. That way the most people see it, right? Now that does bring up a problem of when your clinic's busy, you probably want to be doing rehab, which is that stage two activity. Um, and this is only for those of you who don't have a lot of space. So if you don't have a lot of space, I think every day you want at least one hour of fitness classes that can demonstrate to all your clinic people that this class is going on. The other hours of the day, open it back up for rehab. That's fine. But you got to have this kind of advertising um, excitement, energy thing to push forward. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that is the final phase, fitness. That's a membership. And really here, uh, the reason it's also at th phase three is we're, we're betting on the fact that you already have a trainer to run these classes or a couple trainers. Now, I'm totally fine if you're like, hey, I want to coach some of it. I certainly coached classes when, you know, my early years. And it's cool. Get your hands dirty. But uh, when you're offering a membership type product, you got to have that class. You got to host it. It's your responsibility to host it. And I'll tell you, just things come up. You know, you get sick. You're tired. You have a meeting early on. Uh, you want you want to spend time with your kids or you want to go out of town. Well, somebody has to run that class. And that's why you want to make sure you have a trainer going. Now, the best situation is that the trainer's running the class and they just tell you, hey, uh, next Friday, you know, I'm out of town for my um, my fiance's birthday and can you cover, you know, and you hop into that class again the, as the owner and as the as the healthcare provider. That also allows you to kind of, you know, experiment with some things and you'll probably see some of your patients in that class and be like, oh, wow, you're doing really good. Those things are always pretty exciting, but. Uh, you definitely want to have that. You need to have at least one other person that you guys can trade off classes with. And I would say until you have that second person, do not sell memberships because you're going to end up with some angry people when you take some time off. So that is phase three. Uh, along with that, I'm assuming since you're now offering a fitness product, you have the equipment to do so. For example, when you're rehabbing people, you don't need that many kettlebells. When you're doing fitness classes, you need a couple more in case people are using, you know, two people are using the same weight, something like that. Um, so you have that. You also decide uh, how you're billing these people for their memberships, how they're checking in. Um, you're, you're working on your hours. You're probably doing some social media promoting, maybe some marketing. You got to work all those things out. But that's why it's phase three, because along the way, you've kind of gone in a stepwise progression to uh, address all these things. So let's go back down to phase two. And phase two, I think, is really where things change in a big way. And this is when you hire that trainer, okay? So uh, what's exciting about this? Well, number one, that, that trainer is going to offload some of your work. So you get a little bit of breathing room. Um, so you can, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. You can either 
educate yourself more so you can use that extra time that the trainer's covering you on and do some online education. Uh, more likely, it's going to turn into a second revenue source. That's a second revenue stream coming in, which is awesome. And third thing is you're going to get some breathing room. Uh, so maybe you can spend more time with the really difficult patients, those that have, you know, for me, I struggle with people like if they truly have an instability in their lumbar spine or they have significant pain from their thoracic spine, I struggle with those cases. Um, trying to think of any others that just send me for a loop. Uh, people with exercise-induced headaches or, or headaches that are magnified by exercise, I struggle with them as well. Yeah, those, those three groups. But anyway, so if I had those patients in the office and I want to spend time working on them, at that time, that's a perfect reason why that trainer would be working with everyone else. So if you think about a pyramid, those difficult cases to me or to you, so those you know lumbar instabilities, for example, true instabilities, are maybe the peak of the pyramid, right? You really got to work hard to rehab them without flaring them up. At least that's how I think, Ben. If you got tips, let me know. But I really, you know, it takes a lot of work to not flare them up. Well, it usually takes extra time. And so you want to have that extra time. And the only way to do that is somebody has to do the work. And that's a great role for that highly trained CA slash trainer. Now, for all the PTs listening and athletic trainers, I'm a chiropractor. And so we say CAs as chiropractic assistants, just like a uh, friends, my friends in the PT world say PTAs or uh, aides. That's a physical therapy assistant or physical therapy aid. Um, either way, it works. It's just that secondary provider. And you see this throughout all of medicine, right? Physicians hire PAs, physician assistants to extend their care. Um, you know, hospitals have nurses, right? They're, they're playing that secondary uh, role. They still are hiring the, the doctors, but the nurses do a lot of the kind of block and tackling, heavy lifting day-to-day -day operation stuff. Um, and so that's really what we're talking about here is a CA. Now that CA could be a, a personal trainer, when I say trainer, I'm not saying they're necessarily certified. They're just have that knowledge base, right? I don't, so they don't need to be CSCS or uh, ACSM certified, but they do need to have a knowledge base. And I think the best way to do that is you as the provider, teach them, educate them, and then send them to the right classes. Like I'm a huge fan of the CFSC, the Certified Functional Strength Coach Program through Mike Boyle. Huge fan of Exercise Checklist by Brendan Rierick. Huge fan of FRC, functional range conditioning. Uh, obviously, I think it's paramount that they've, I'm assuming that you're even in this position because you've already done the SFMA for painful patients and the FMS for as a check as a checklist for non-painful people. Anyways, so we have all the situations going um, and we're in phase two. So what is phase two? This is hiring that trainer and they are a, an additional revenue source. So if you're open nine to noon, seeing patients, the goal would be that you're seeing as the provider, you're seeing patients on whatever cadence you want every 30 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever. And that the, in a perfect world, that trainer is seeing clients on a cadence every 30 or 60 minutes, right? And so they're working with clients on in like a session type setup, one-on-one uh, -on -one, either 30 or 60 minute increments. The goal of what they're doing is they are working with people to continue the care that you started and provide them that the relief, the rehab, the exercise that they need to really progress their care. Now, if this doesn't, this often gets overlooked, but let me share a big deal for you. It's a big deal when you can get your patients to book with that trainer slash CA who never expect to see you in the session. Okay. So once again, they're booking with your secondary providers. The patient is booking with the secondary providers and has no expectation to see the uh, physician or provider at that time, right? That primary provider. Why is that a big deal? Well, at that point, when they trust that your trainer slash CA understands things well enough, it opens up a world of possibilities because now that person can direct traffic for you now you don't have to be on site and they can still be working with people as long as your state allows that. But, you know, think about it. You could be off uh, marketing. You could be off um, doing a, a promotion event. You could be off treating at a secondary location. Maybe you have a, an office at a golf course or something like that. Cool. This person, this trainer slash CA is getting patients to book that time and working with them without you having to be there. And that is a, another way that just opens up your business 
in a great way. You have all this revenue coming in and you can take the day off and still do it. Or I say the, I call it the flu test. You know, if today you woke up, you got the flu and you needed to make sure that everybody on the schedule got taken care of. Can you call that trainer and can they work with 80 to 90% of your patients, even if you're home with the flu? Uh, COVID kind of brought that one to the forefront, but, you know, give that some thought. If you were to get sick tomorrow, could your office schedule your patients with somebody? And I think a CA slash trainer is a perfect person to schedule that with. So that's phase two. It means you also have to develop billing for this person. This person has to do some sort of note taking if they're, you know, what, whatever, like, hey, I, I rehab the right hip or whatever. You want to have um, some note taking billing and you want to make sure that your front desk is flowing with that too. Like, hey, Mr. Johnson, I know that you want to see, you said you want to see Dr. Satterley. Our records show that you could actually work with our coach and trainer, CA, whatever you want to call them. And, uh, you know, we can get you in there immediately. But if you want to wait for Dr. Saturday, it's going to be five to seven days. You know, that kind of language is really good when the front desk, you know, is working with, working towards filling up the provider schedule and the trainer schedule. Uh, good, good things happen. Now, you also got to figure out in that situation, uh, your ratio and your ratio would be this for every hour that the doctor works or the provider works. How much support do they need? Do they need a one CA slash trainer who's working with people at the same time? Um, you know, I look at uh, Dr. Jason Holm. Uh, he runs what I again, I always say is like one of the best chiropractic clinics in the nation. Um, I think it's like three providers and they have maybe five it's like i think it's a one and a half to one ratio so one provider is requires one and a half secondaries so i think when there's uh three providers working there there's five cas or you know secondary staff working or ctas he calls them um they're they're trying to do that so you got to figure out that ratio uh because that trainer can fill a lot of roles number one they can just be working with people who you've essentially discharged to exercise they can also work as a bridge. So you bring somebody in, do a little bit of treatment, and then say, hey, for the rest of this hour, I want you working with Steve over here, our trainer. He's going to work on those exercises with you. Um, they can also do some intake history stuff. They can, uh, I know Jason Holm has, has his secondaries film people doing the top tier of the SFMA, break down the film, do some highlights, lines and circles, and uh, that impresses the clients. There's so much that that CA trainer can do. And I've talked about this in previous episodes. That's why it's so important that you train them all the time. So every week, set up some training time and what you want to go over so that you're all on the same page. And so they become excellent at dealing with patients with pain. I mean, that's mostly who they're going to deal with. And the more they can handle patients in pain, the more work you can get off your shoulders. So I highly recommend that. Um, you know, that uh, getting that trainer and or maybe it's two trainers in your world, maybe it's a trainer and a half or, you know, however many hours or you, you think you need, or it's one trainer doing exercise sessions and another one working in the um, working in the clinic with you, you know? Uh, yeah, so that's, that's a possibility as well. Um, let's see. Let's move down to stage one. So stage one is what we call the exercise stage. And it is just, it's very simple. Make sure that exercise is in every care plan you offer. Now, there's a cool thing that happens here. When you, when you switch the script on people and you say, yeah, you're going to come in, but start telling them from day one, hey, the goal is not to stay in the clinic. The goal of our care is to get you to the point where you can exercise. That changes the, the knowledge and you say, Hey, uh, you know, it's not, I don't want to be adjusting you for the rest of your life. I don't want you coming in here for six straight months. We want to get you resilient. We want to get you strong. We want to move you on. And the only way that happens is by you doing the exercises right now, Mr. Johnson, how many, how committed are you to getting better? And you'll get the, Oh, I'm 10 out of 10. Great. How much time can you commit to doing exercises? Oh, you tell me to do it. I'll do it. Great. How many actual hours is that a day? Oh, I can do like uh, 30 minutes every day. Fantastic. So we really want to promote that autonomy and, you know, agree with what they are going to do and what you are going to do. But we want to offer exercise. Now, a couple things come up when we offer exercise. 
it oftentimes takes more time. So you got to figure that part out. Like how can they do the exercise? I've seen clinics where they're assigned the exercise, the provider, uh, doctor covers the first set of exercises and then tells them, all right, I want you to stay here and do three more sets. Giving them that independence is actually better than every single set being supervised. Uh, if you look at the study of motor learning, it's better to leave them alone than it is to coach the hell out of them. So I'll just let that sit there in your mind, but you might want to have people come out of your office after you've treated them, just go into your rehab area, you show them the first set of exercises, and then they do three or four more sets. That actually is the best way to do it according to the research. But uh, more so than that, so every patient needs to get exercise, and I think this is the opportunity to start phrasing exercise as a graduation event. So I really like this idea of graduating, patients graduating out of clinical care and into exercise. It works really good if, you're, if you have that trainer on site, going back to phase two where you have the trainer, we call it the perfect conversation. You walk up. Uh, the train, you give a little high sign to the trainer. They know to walk over with a new, when you're dealing with a new patient and you, as the provider say to that patient, uh, Mrs. Johnson, this is Ken, our trainer. Ken is the absolute best person in the area to work with people with your condition. So if they had low back pain, I would say, Ms. Johnson, this is Ken. He's our trainer. Ken is the absolute best trainer in the area working with, who works with people with low back pain similar to yours, right? At that point, Ken takes over the conversation and says, oh, Mrs. Johnson, it's a pleasure working with you. I can't wait till you graduate out of the clinic and you can work with me on exercise. Uh, I look forward to meeting you. At which point, Ken shakes her hand, walks away, goes back to work with his clients or going back to whatever he's doing. At that point, I look at the patient and say, yeah, like Ken said, we really want you to graduate to the exercise and fitness, but right now we need to take care of the pain that's going on in your low back. So why don't we head back to the exam room and find out what the heck's going on so we can help you graduate even faster. All right, so that's the perfect conversation. Rewind this and listen to it again if you need it. But here's what I did. I said graduate three different times, and I'm setting up a logical progression for the patient. And I'm putting to bed the number one concern about chiropractors, which is as soon as you go, you have to go back to them for life. We know that's not true, but that's the most common misbelief, disbelief, what is that called? Wives' tale about chiropractors. Once you go, you have to go forever. And what I like to do is switch it up on the patient and say, no, 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 I'm trying to get rid of you as fast as possible. Now, I want you to be out of pain when we move you forward, but you know, I want you graduated as soon as possible. It definitely throws them for a loop and they see a different side of chiropractic. And there's now a clear reason why I would schedule them with Ken, the trainer, rather than continuously scheduling them with me, all right? So if, moving back to the discussion around phase one, if you're giving exercise and you tell them why exercise is so important, makes you resilient, makes you stronger, helps you resist future injury, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you're setting up a perfect red carpet or yellow brick road leading right to working with the trainer in your office. And you're setting it up as to, it's very clear now why that patient would pay for a exercise session and not expect to get treated at that same time, which again opens up the world to us. So those are the three phases. So phase one, again, every patient gets exercise and we're starting to set up this idea of exercise as a progression in care and in the uh, appointments. Number two, you hire you find, hire, train that um, coach slash CA slash trainer, whatever you want to call them in your world, uh, and start utilizing them with as many patients as possible. Utilize them with uh, patients that aren't seeing you anymore. Utilize them on the front end for histories um, and and basic basic testing like filming, you know, or having to perform the FMS or whatever. And after you actively treat people, have them help out in driving the rehab and exercise sessions that don't include you. And then finally, phase three is the membership phase. We're building off those exercise slash rehab sessions. And we're saying, hey, if you like that, wait to see our ongoing exercise class um, where we offer this small group. And I highly recommend small group, the small group fitness training for people in a session. Uh, so that means you also to get that membership, you have the trainer who's already knows what the heck they're doing. 
you have the equipment, you have the programming, you have all those things and you get it all set up. So with that, uh, yeah, those are the three phases that I think you need to kind of focus on and figure out where are you at. And if you are at phase one, totally fine. Maybe you're at phase zero where you're not offering exercise. Cool. Then just move to phase one, start offering exercise as part of every single care plan. All right. Even if you're the only person running it, you're a lone wolf, all alone, run that exercise. If you got that handled, then progress to phase two where you're hiring somebody and teaching them. And then if that works, go to phase three where you're selling memberships and you're offering memberships as continued uh, care for your patients. So if you got any questions with this, hit me up, Josh at Clinic Gym Hybrid. Ask those questions in email. I'm happy to answer them for you. Um, Also, if you don't mind diving into your podcast player and leaving a review. Now, I know a lot of places say leave a five-star review. You can leave a one star or a four star or five. I would love five stars, but just be honest. I would love your feedback about how this is. I know I don't have the greatest radio voice, voice, but you know if you can push through that, I hope this information is useful to you. And let's see, are there any other details I want to cover? The three phases of the clinic gym hybrid. I think that's it. If you're looking for more information or an outline of how to do this step by step, Go to clinicgymhybrid.com and check out our accelerator program. It's uh, about 40 different lessons detailed out and uh, step-by-step of how to train your staff, how to work with people, how to do all these things in a continuation, a continuous program so that you don't have to do a lot each day, but if you just do a lot every day, or sorry, if you do a little every day, you'll end up in six months with an amazing clinic gym hybrid. So if you're into that, go check out our website, clinicgymhybrid.com, and check out the accelerator program. Besides that, um, I am teaching some out on the road, teaching some SFMA courses. So I will be talking about those more often. And I'm also speaking at Parker Vegas, which is February. I think I'm speaking on February 10th here in Las Vegas. Uh, if you are listening, if you're going to Parker, then please come to my session on Friday at 2:30, uh, talking about turning trust into treatment all about the communication in healthcare, which is there's just a huge fall off there. So I really want you to really love to have you there at that session and share some ideas. And I think we got a pretty good presentation put together for you. With that, uh, I guess I will sign off. So this is Dr. Josh Satterley saying, go out there, maximize your license and live the life you dream of. Thanks everybody for listening. And by the way, check out our other um, podcasts. See ya. Thanks so much for checking out these videos. I hope they're useful. We'll cover things like rehab, exercise, business model, progressions, layout, everything else that helps you build a clinic. So if you're interested, you can click here, there, here, here, or anywhere to get more videos just like this. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you soon.